In this lesson, we cover some fundamental concepts related to the study of paracyclic reactions, including frontier molecular orbital theory and orbital symmetry. Paracyclic reactions are a third important mechanistic type of organic reaction, the other major types being polar reactions and radical reactions. Paracyclic reactions are distinct from other reactions in that they have a concerted mechanism and a cyclic transition state. This means the paracyclic reactions have a one-step mechanism with a circular flow of electrons and typically involve reorganization of pi electrons. Because all bond forming and cleaving occurs in a single step, paracyclic reactions are stereospecific. Any stereochemistry in the reactants will influence the stereochemistry of the products in a predictable way. The reaction shown here exemplifies a paracyclic reaction. It has a one-step mechanism and a cyclic flow of electrons. There are several types of paracyclic reactions, but the three most important are electrocyclic reactions, cycloadditions, and sigmatropic rearrangements. Electrocyclic reactions form a new ring from the closure of a single pi system. Cycloadditions form a ring from the addition of two separate pi systems. Sigmatropic rearrangements involve the migration of atoms via movement of a sigma bond. We'll cover each of these three types of paracyclic reaction in greater detail in future lessons. For now, we'll be focusing on the fundamental concepts needed to understand paracyclic reactions. The study of paracyclic reactions relies heavily on a firm understanding of some basic molecular orbital theory. Remember that molecular orbitals are formed from the combination or overlap of atomic orbitals from two or more atoms. The number of orbitals involved is conserved. If two atomic orbitals combine, two molecular orbitals are formed. In the study of organic chemistry, pi molecular orbitals are formed from the overlap of p orbitals. Adjacent orbitals overlapping in phase result in a bonding interaction. Adjacent orbitals overlapping out of phase result in an anti-bonding interaction. Pi molecular orbitals are often represented by the Greek letter psi and are sequentially numbered starting with the orbital of lowest energy. The figure here shows three common pi molecular orbital systems. On the left, we see the pi molecular orbitals of ethene. Each of the two sp2 carbons contributes a p orbital to the system, giving two pi molecular orbitals. Psi1 is a bonding molecular orbital and is formed from the in-phase overlap of p orbitals. Psi2 is an anti-bonding molecular orbital formed from the out-of-phase overlap of p orbitals. In the center, we see the pi molecular orbitals of the allylic carbocation. The three sp2 carbons each contribute a p orbital to the system, giving three pi molecular orbitals. Psi1 is a bonding molecular orbital, Psi2 is a non-bonding molecular orbital, and Psi3 is an anti-bonding molecular orbital. On the right, we see the pi molecular orbitals of 1,3-butadiene. Each of the four sp2 carbons contributes a p orbital to the system, giving four pi molecular orbitals. Psi1 and Psi2 are bonding molecular orbitals, while Psi3 and Psi4 are anti-bonding molecular orbitals. When studying paracyclic reactions, the only orbitals we really need to consider are the frontier molecular orbitals, or FMOs. The frontier molecular orbitals are the two orbitals at the transition of electron occupancy, which are called the HOMO and LUMO. The HOMO is the highest occupied molecular orbital, the highest energy orbital with an electron. The LUMO is the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, the lowest energy orbital that is empty. Here, we see the pi molecular orbitals for 1,3-butadiene, in the ground state, the four pi electrons that form the two pi bonds occupy psi1 and psi2. Psi2 is the HOMO, the occupied orbital of highest energy. Psi3 is the LUMO, the unoccupied orbital of lowest energy. Fortunately, we don't need to know exactly what the FMOs look like. We only need to know each orbital's symmetry. A symmetric orbital has a mirror plane that bisects the pi system. Here, we see an example of a symmetric molecular orbital. The left half exactly mirrors the right half. Symmetric molecular orbitals will have ends that match with respect to phase. In this case, the blue lobes on the outer edges are both pointing down. An asymmetric molecular orbital has a center of inversion. With respect to phase, the left half is the exact opposite of the right half. Asymmetric molecular orbitals will have ends that are a mismatch with respect to phase. In this case, the blue lobes on the outer edges are pointing in opposite directions, one up and one down. Because only the symmetry of the orbitals is important, FMOs are often drawn with a simplified representation. 
So here's an example of a simplified drawing of a symmetric molecular orbital. Only the two outermost atoms are drawn and are connected with a line that represents all the other atoms of the pi system. The symmetry of any pi molecular orbital can actually be determined quickly, even without knowing what it looks like. If we look at the example here, we see that odd-numbered pi molecular orbitals are always symmetric, and even-numbered pi molecular orbitals are always asymmetric. Paracyclic reactions can occur under either thermal or photochemical conditions. Under thermal conditions, energy is applied in the form of heat. Under these conditions, all the molecules will be in a ground state electronic configuration. Under photochemical conditions, energy is applied in the form of light. Under these conditions, one molecule will be in an excited state electronic configuration. It's critical to realize that the frontier molecular orbitals for a given pi system will change based on the reaction conditions. The figure here shows the pi molecular orbitals of 1,3-butadiene. On the left, we see the molecule in the ground state, in which the electrons occupy the available orbitals of lowest energy. The ground state occurs under thermal conditions, and 1,3-butadiene will have psi2 as homo and psi3 as lumo. If the correct form of light energy is applied, the molecule can change to an excited state. On the right, we see the molecule in the lowest energy excited state, in which one electron has been excited from psi2 to psi3. The excited state occurs under photochemical conditions, and 1,3-butadiene will now have psi3 as homo and psi4 as lumo. We can see that the homo and lumo change based on whether the reaction is performed under thermal or photochemical conditions. In the upcoming lessons, you'll see how all of this frontier molecular orbital theory applies to the various types of paracyclic reactions.